Hey guys, if you're somebody who wants to learn a little bit about the Omicron variant, but you do not want the sensationalization and the drama, then this is the video for you. I am Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic surgeon and COVID-19 physician from the beautiful city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India. And I believe that information about a disease is the first step you and I take to beat that disease. And this video is just about us doing that together. Now, Omicron, what is it? Should we be worried about it or not? And what is this whole thing about mutations which are going on? I know many of you are confused and many of you want to understand if it is really this scary. And this video will help you understand mutations in general. So let's go straight into breaking down Omicron. Now, Omicron's actual name is B1.1529 and it was discovered on November 11th, 2021 in South Africa by a clinician who noticed that many of her patients were having headache and severe body pain instead of the classical COVID-19 symptoms and this is what made her scrutinize the genome to find out if it was a new variant. And they have sequenced the entire 35,000 or so RNA sequences of more than 100 samples and they have sequenced out this Omicron. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that the world is going to end? No, it is too soon for anybody to say that the world is going to end or there is going to be a doomsday. So let us first find out what is the concern about this Omicron. The first concern is that it has way more mutations than the previous alpha, beta or the delta viruses. But is it a matter of concern? Let us see what science has to tell us. Now, all of us have seen the COVID-19 virus. We know that every time a COVID-19 virus replicates as it is an RNA virus, the replicated or the newly produced form of the virus is not similar or is not exactly the same. It is because the RNA replication mechanism is faulty. So most of the time it results in a useless mutation where the virus dies or there is no change. But very rarely, sometimes one in a million, one in five million, one in 10 million, the virus produces something which could make the virus hardier, that is harder to destroy, make it easier to spread and could cause severe disease and mutations are all about identifying if any of the new variants can cause either of these coming to the virus per se as you know the SARS-CoV-2 has a body which is the round spherical structure then it has a spike protein which projects out of the body and on the tip of the spike protein, you have something known as the RBD or the receptor binding protein. Guys, let's break this down. The body of the virus is responsible for how hard it is to kill the virus most of the time because it can be an enveloped, it can be a non-enveloped and so either sanitizers will kill it or washing hands will kill it or you need stronger chemicals. Then let's go to the spike protein. The spike protein is primarily responsible for infectivity, how much the virus can spread and how fast it can spread. Then let's come to the receptor binding protein, which is the structure on the tip of the spike protein. So let's get this into our heads. This is the most interactive part of the COVID-19 virus. And if there are a lot of changes in this part, the receptor binding part of the SARS-CoV-2, scientists are a bit concerned. And this is the reason there is so much buzz about the Omicron. So let's get further deep into this and identify what are the mutations which are different in the Omicron. Now, let's look at the viral body. When we take the alpha variant, there were 23 mutations. When we take the delta variant, there were 17. But when we take the Omicron, there are 50 mutations in the body. Then let us talk about the spike protein. And the spike protein, there were nine mutations in the alpha, seven mutations in the delta, and there are 32 mutations in the Omicron. Now coming to the most important and interactive part of the virus, that is the receptor binding protein. The alpha variant had just one mutation, the delta variant had two mutations, but the Omicron variant has 
10 mutations and this is the information we have at this point of time. Now when it comes to these mutations, what are the things we need to understand these mutations can create which can affect our human race. The first thing is how it spreads, the efficacy of spread which is commonly known as transmissibility. I would like to simplify it further and say transmissibility or spreading in the unvaccinated. How do we assess this? We assess how fast the virus spreads in unvaccinated and how many viruses or viral load is required to create an illness. Why is how fast important? If the incubation period is smaller or shorter, it means that our immune cells have a very short time to produce antibodies. But if the incubation period is longer, our immune cells have a lot of time to produce antibodies and in this case the first clinician in South Africa who identified this variant says that the incubation period is around seven to eight days so that is good news the next thing is what is the amount of virus which is needed that is the viral load this is a study which has to be done in the lab and studies are ongoing when the reports come I will be one of the first to bring it to you. Then the next term is immune escape or vaccine escape. This is a very confusing term. I would put it as how much does this virus affect those who are vaccinated? That is what is immune escape. Now to identify this, we need to identify whether the virus, the new variant causes just an infection, causes mild disease, causes severe disease or causes death, whether the new infection or the new variant can escape the vaccine and cause either of these damages. Why is it important? If you're vaccinated and this new variant just causes an infection, it is a good thing because your immune system is charged once again. It is like you getting a booster dose. Now, are just antibodies responsible for how severe a disease you get? No, antibodies are primarily responsible for recognizing the virus and stopping the virus from infecting you. There are natural killer cells and T cells, which are other immune cells, which are responsible along with the antibodies to prevent or reduce the possibility of a severe disease. And it is very difficult to assess whether there are natural killer cells and T cells are efficient against the new variant within three weeks of identifying the variant. So it is all speculation. Then let us go to the third and the most scary part of vaccine escape or immune escape. Does it cause death? Again, we all know that from the time a new infection starts, it takes around six weeks to eight weeks for us to actually understand if it is causing more death or not. So again, guys, anything you hear right now about death is not actual valid information or it is not peer reviewed. So don't get scared. Now that we've seen transmission amongst the non-vaccinated and immune escape or vaccine escape, which is basically just transmission in the vaccinated. What is the other thing we should be worried about? There are two other things, whether this mutant causes more severe disease and if this mutant is harder to kill. Now, how do you identify if this is harder to kill? You have to put the virus and put a lot of other substances inside a test tube and tests have to be done in order to identify if it is harder to kill and in order to identify if it is more virulent or so. And those lab tests have just been started. Now, in order for us to clinically or epidemiologically compare if this variant causes more death, causes more disease in the vaccinated, it will take at least a period of six weeks time. But let me tell you what we know till now and why we just need to be vigilant and not scared or panic. We know that the clinician who identified this disease, that doctor feels that it is not a more severe variant, nor is it causing death or severe disease. It is just causing a change of symptoms that is headache and severe body pain. And in South Africa, they also noticed that even though the number of infections are increasing, the number of hospital admissions, ICU admissions and death is not increasing as of now. So guys, we all know that this RNA virus is going to mutate and we all know that sensationalism and scaring us 
is part of the game. So let us base our fears and our thoughts on science. And I will be very happy to bring any information about the Omicron, which is validated to you. And if you found this information useful, like, share, subscribe, and also press the notification button so that you get such regular updates. Signing off from the beautiful city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India, Dr. Santosh Jacob.